everybody. Welcome back to Simply Love Time of Worship for children, for parents, for grandparents. Have you thought about inviting your neighbors to come over to watch too? Well, that would be so much fun. I'm so glad you're here today. So thankful that you are making time in your busy day, your busy week to worship our Lord together because we know how much we are simply loved by him. And he is so pleased when we come together, even through a screen, to take time to worship him. So thanks for joining me. Now make sure you have your October bag, your October Simply Loved bag. It's got a pumpkin right in the front, or maybe like me, you already took it out. And then you need your squishy apple prayer a uh, pr- little prayer squeezy so that we can spend some time praying for our schools again today. Well, I have a couple cool photos that I want to show you we're going to put up on the stream. First of all, I'm excited that I have some friends that are here joining with me today. If you still have your cardboard cut out and you want to get that delivered to the church, feel free to do so. I love that I don't feel so very alone. I also want to show you a photo I have a couple photos, actually, of some of you. So this photo is of my nephew, Levi. And you can see there's Levi. He made his stars out of the popsicle sticks. And he's holding it up while he's watching Simply Loved. Levi, I love that you are taking part in this worship service. Thanks to your mommy for sending in this photo. Our other picture is of Xander. Check out Xander's star. This was a serious piece of art. He took so much time, Grandma Shelley told me. So thank you, Xander, for making that beautiful star and for Grandma for sending that photo in. The last photo we have is also from Xander. Thank you, Xander, for creating, I'm sure those of you watching this at home can guess, an incredible Noah's Ark out of Legos. You know, friends, Those photos mean so much to me when they come in, whether they come into the email or to the church email or some of them are texted right to my phone, but they remind me that you are here because I wish I could see you. I wish we were here worshiping together. So keep sending in those photos, showing me that you are enjoying this time of worship together. All right. Before we get rolling today and before we get singing and dancing, I want you to go ahead and take out your squeezy apple. And we're going to take a moment together to pray for our teachers. There can never be enough prayer said for our teachers. And remember, your teacher this year might be a parent or a grandparent. Or your teacher might be someone you don't see because you're going to school through the computer screen. Or if you're at school, you know the name of your teacher or maybe you have a few. So when it comes time in our prayer, please shout out the name of your teacher so we can cover them with prayer. Let's go ahead and fold our hands and bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that you created us to learn. And thank you so much that this year our schools may not look the way they used to, but you are still helping us be creative. You are still bringing us to teachers of all sorts, teachers in different places, and you are giving us chances to learn much more about this world. And Father, right now we shout out the names of our teachers so loudly that you can hear them. And Father, we pray for each one of those teachers that you would continue to give them hope and rest when they need it, that you would help them to stay healthy and to find from you the energy and the creativity that we know they need to keep doing their job every single day. We love our teachers. Thank you for creating our teachers and continue to give them the strength they need. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Awesome. Thank you. Well, if you're not standing up yet, go ahead and stand up. We're going to enter into our time of worship with a song made for this.
Thanks for singing and dancing with me. That one is so much fun. Now, before we talk about this month's verse, I want to ask you for another challenge with those popsicle sticks. Last week's challenge was to make a star, and it reminded us reminded us of God's promise to Abraham that he would give him as many descendants or children and then grandchildren and then great-grandchildren as there were stars in the sky, and he kept his promise. This week is a little bit of a different challenge I'm going to ask you with these sticks. I'm going to ask you and your family to come up with some jokes or some riddles. And on one side of the stick, maybe with a pencil or pen, you can write the joke. And on the other side, you can write the answer. And when your family's together, maybe eating dinner one night, pull up those jokes and have some fun laughing together. You may wonder what this has to do with being simply loved by God. But you're going to know later. Today's story is about a woman who actually thought God was playing a joke on her. He thought a promise, she thought a promise that God made to her and her family was a joke. It certainly seemed like a joke to her at the time. So have some fun this week. Turn some of your popsicle sticks into some jokes. All right. Well, if you remember, if you joined us last week, that was the first Simply Loved for the month of October. And we learned a brand new Bible point. Our Bible point is something we say over and over through our time of worship. Something that is a truth from God that we really want to get stuck in our hearts. And this month, our Bible point is this. We can trust God. And then after that, we point up to heaven and we say, trust God. Or maybe we even shout it, trust God. So every time today that you hear me say, we can trust God, you repeat after me. And then you follow and say, trust God. And today's story will not disappoint us as we learn about this woman that, again, thought there was a joke involved. But in the end, learned what a beautiful thing it is to trust God. Now, our new, our buddy that we met last week, Ray, the manta ray, we are going to have another moment here where we'll watch a video and we'll learn a little bit more about manta rays and about our buddy Ray and a little bit about, more about our story for today. But like always, I have a quick little quiz for you. I want to know if you know the meaning of the word manta. It's actually a Spanish word. And you know what? It either means blanket Or float. I want you to shout to the TV screen, to your computer screen, on the count of three. Do you think the Spanish word manta is translated to mean blanket or float? Ready? One, two, three. Ooh, I heard a little bit of both. The correct meaning of the word manta when you translate to English is blanket. Isn't that interesting? And I guess if you sort of look at the shape of a manta ray, it does sort of appear to look a little bit like a blanket. Well, let's go ahead and tune in to this week's video where we'll learn a little bit more about ray. (laughs) Hey friends, it's me. I'm Ray, and I'm a giant manta ray. The name manta comes from a Spanish word that means blanket. Can you see why? Ah, this blanket glides through the day, enjoying God's great blue ocean. We giant manta rays like to hang out in shallow water during the day. Then we dive down into the deep end of the sea at night. What about you? Do you like the shallow end or the deep end of the pool? I'm one of the world's largest fish. And I tell the world's funniest fish jokes. Want to hear some? What fish are musical? Tuna fish. La, la, la. What do you call a fish with no eyes? A fish. Get it? The letter I is missing. (laughs) One more. What fish is most valuable? A goldfish. It feels good to laugh, doesn't it? Trusting God puts a smile on your face. God always keeps his promises. Now that's something to brighten any day. 
In the Bible book of Psalms, chapter 33, verse 4, it says, For the word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust everything he does. In the Bible, a woman named Sarah had a good chuckle too. She was as old as a grandma, so she thought the idea of having a baby was pretty funny. But God's promise came true, and she had a baby boy. Sarah and her husband Abraham named the boy Isaac, which means laughter. It's fun to look back and see how God keeps his promises. Maybe you needed friends and God was with you. Or maybe you were scared and God comforted you. Or perhaps you asked God for help and he answered in a surprising way. We may not see or realize that God's working in our lives, but he is. So keep an eye out for God's promises to come true for you. You can because you're not a <laughs> We can trust God. That's right. We can trust God. Trust God. Awesome job. So let's revisit our Bible verse for the month of October. It comes from the book of Psalms, and it's Psalm 33, Psalm chapter 33, verse 4. I will say it with the motions, and just like last week, I want you to repeat after me. You do the motions too. So here we go. For the word of the Lord, your turn, holds true. And we can trust, so hold on to something. Pretend to hold on to something that you know you can trust will keep you steady. And we can trust everything he does. Let's do that one more time. Repeat after me. For the word of the Lord holds true. And we can trust everything he does. Where does that come from in the Bible? Psalm 33, chapter 4. And I know you've got your Bible around the house. Maybe it's grandma's Bible. Maybe it's her sister's Bible. I would love for you to take a time, even right now you can pause the video and open up the family Bible you have and see if Psalm 33 verse 4 sounds the same that it does here. It might have a few different words, but the meaning is the same. We can trust everything God does. We can trust God. Trust God. I'm so excited for us to sing this next song. Guess what it's called? We can trust him. And it's based on the exact verse, the words from Psalm 33, verse 4. Listen as you sing along. It's going to help as you sing. Get this month's Bible verse just into your heart and into your mind so it will stay there forever. Let's sing.
I told you. Basically, the words to that song are this month's Bible verse. You might want to play that over and over and over. Singing a song with God's word is one of the best ways to have God's word truly, truly be hidden in our hearts and our minds. So it will always stay there. Well, I want to go ahead and tell you about this week's Bible story. You've already gotten a sneak peek. You know it's about a woman named Sarah. And you know that there are some jokes involved. Or at least that's what she thought. So we do know that we can trust God. Trust God. But we also know it can be hard to trust God when we don't understand. Today, in our story... We're going to hear about a man and a woman. And the man, actually, we met in last week's story. Last week, we knew him as Abram. In this week's story, his name has changed to Abraham. And God actually was the one that changed his name to Abraham because God made Abraham a very special promise. Such a special promise. He gave him a new name for it. So this story starts and ends with a baby. A promise of a baby and an actual baby. What God did was he promised to give Abraham and his wife Sarah a really big family. Remember those stars from last week? God promised to give Abraham and Sarah as many descendants as there were stars in the sky. But Abraham and Sarah were still waiting and waiting and waiting. And they were getting old and older and older, so old that they were beginning to believe God had forgotten his promise. Maybe even God wouldn't keep his promise. But one day, three really important visitors showed up, unexpected. Abraham was not ready for these visitors at all. And when they approached Abraham in his tent, he was probably pretty surprised, jumped up and then bowed down. He could tell that these were really important, very special people that had come. So, of course, what Abraham did was say, oh, hello, please, please come inside and please stay. Let me feed you. So he ran to Sarah and said, Sarah, we have company. We have visitors. Start baking bread. And so Sarah did. She was helping get the food ready for the visitors so that they could stay and visit with Abraham. So they ate and they talked. And then all of a sudden, one of the visitors says to Abraham, you know, Abraham, next time this year, you and Sarah, you'll have a son. (laughs) Now, Abraham didn't know it. And the visitors didn't know it. But Sarah was eavesdropping. Do you know what that word means? Sarah was listening in on a conversation that she wasn't invited to. But she was very curious as to who these visitors were and what they had to say. And when she heard this visitor say that she and Abraham would have a son the next year at that same time, do you know what she did? (laughs) She laughed. Can you let out your biggest, best laugh? Oh, no, no, no. Louder and bigger. There we go. I think that's the kind of laugh that Sarah let out. This was at the point where Sarah thought, this is a joke. I'm old. (laughs) I'm really old. Abraham is really, really old. And God gave up on this promise. They weren't waiting for this promise anymore. They thought God had forgotten. Well, I'm going to open up my Bible And in the book of Genesis, we're still here in Genesis, the first book of the Bible. Chapter 18, verses 12, 13, and 14 says this. So she, Sarah, she laughed to herself. She thought, I'm worn out and my husband is old. Can I really know the joy of having a child? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, will I really have a baby now that I'm old? Is anything too hard for me? Asks God. I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. My friends, nothing is too hard for God. (laughs) And we can trust God. 
Trust God. You know, maybe you're waiting for something right now. The way that Sarah and Abraham were waiting for this promise to have a child or children. Would you turn to someone that you're sitting with at home and take a moment, and you can even pause the video if you need to, and and share something that you're waiting for. Maybe you're waiting for the coronavirus to just go away. (laughs) Maybe you're waiting for the day when we can go back to school and not wear masks, or we can have playdates with our friends, or maybe you're waiting to give hugs. Take a moment and think about something that you're waiting for and share that. And you know, my friends, I want to encourage you that no matter what we're waiting for, no matter what, whether it's huge or tiny, (laughs) whether it's something that we don't know when it's going to happen or or it's going to happen tonight, we just want it to happen now, we can trust God. Trust God, no matter what we're waiting for. All right, back to the story. So the visitors were finishing up eating this wonderful food. They said goodbye. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye. Abraham said goodbye. And they waited. And time went on. And do you know what? One year later. What do you think Sarah was doing? God kept his promise. And Sarah was rocking her baby boy. (laughs) How? How did that happen? When they were so old in age, when they were ready to give up on God's promise, how did that happen? I'm going to turn back to Genesis. And this time I'm going to read from Genesis 21, the first two verses. It says here that the Lord was gracious to Sarah, just as he said he would be. The Lord did for Sarah what he had promised to do. Just like our verse says, the word of the Lord holds true. The word of the Lord holds true and we can trust everything he does. And friends, we can trust the promises that he makes. You may know this if you know this story. Abraham and Sarah named their baby boy Isaac. And the name Isaac actually means he laughs. The birth of Isaac, the life of Isaac gave that old couple a bunch of good laughs. But God was good And they trusted him. It's so good to see in this story that God kept his promise to Sarah and to Abraham. Friends, we can trust God. Trust God. We're going to sing a song called Thankful. And as you're reflecting on whatever it is that you want, whatever it is you're waiting for, and maybe you're getting a little antsy waiting God asks that while we're waiting for his promises to be fulfilled, while we're waiting for him to do amazing things around us, he wants us to be thankful. So I want you to stand up and enjoy this time of worship and be thinking of the many, many good things that God already has done for you. Let's sing thankful. To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in praise And I want to be thankful I want to be faithful I want to remember everything That the Lord has done To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in
being thankful is something that is so important for us to do every single day. And maybe your family can come up with a way to encourage each other to be thankful, especially during times of waiting, waiting for something you're excited about, waiting for something to end, waiting for something else to start. Be thankful in all of those times. Now, I'm going to end our time together with our letter. Don't you forget that these letters are in your Simply Loved bag. And when the letter is over, there's extra verses to read. There's extra things you and your family can talk about to make this even more of an amazing Simply Loved worship experience. So find a spot to sit, get yourself comfortable, and listen carefully to these words. We can trust God because God keeps his promises. If you ever had someone not keep a pinky promise, you know the truth. (laughs) Some promises aren't worth much. People mean to keep their promises, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. A promise is only as good as who makes it. And God's promises can be trusted. God has kept his promises no matter what. He's never fumbled or forgotten a promise. And a long time ago, God promised to send a rescuer to save people from their sins. He kept that promise when he sent his only son and our friend Jesus. And here's the good news. God has made promises to you. Jesus promised to love his friends, to give them peace and joy, and to never, ever forget them. You can trust Jesus to keep his promises, every promise every time. Friends, please remember that the word of the Lord, God's word holds true and we can trust everything he says and everything he does. Let me close our time in prayer. Jesus, thank you so much for each of my friends and the grown-ups that are with them entering into this time of simply loved worship. Pour out your blessings upon them for making time to be with you. Go before each of us this week. Help us to remember you have made a lot of promises to us. You've made a lot of promises in the Bible and you keep every single one. Help us to be patient while we wait for whatever we're waiting for right now and help us to be thankful. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, friends, until next week. See you then. Have an amazing week. To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in